Okay, we're gonna do a difference between an abrasive saw and a wet saw. Um, I've got both and I use both of them for different reasons. Um, this was really nice to drag around the shop, especially if I'm doing exhaust on a car or um, you know, if I'm trying to do something in place. If I'm trying to fit something really, really tight, I wanna use this saw and I'll show you why. Um, right now I got the guard stripped off it, which you're not supposed to do, so don't do that. But there's a reason why I pulled the guard off it and I'm gonna show you why. Um, but um, this saw is, if you're really, in, you know, really wanting to just get crazy on some, on some uh, angles, and you're just trying to fit something where you're not really being too super precise, this will get you where you need to be. Um, and I'll show you why in a minute. A couple of different things, wet saw versus abrasive saw. Uh, the, uh, the abrasive on this is actually a consumable that goes fairly quickly, depending on how you use it. The way I use it, uh, they go fast, but surprisingly they do last for a while. Um, you wanna make sure you get a good quality blade. This one here, I'm not, I'm not really excited about. There's better blades than this out there, but um, you can always tell when you put them on. Make sure that you get the the chop saw blade too, because they make another one for a quickie saw, and they're a little bit different. They're a little bit harder, and they don't cut as good on this machine because of the RPMs. There's different RPMs. Okay. Um, make sure that if you're cutting with one of these in your shop, don't have a bunch of linen and carpet and gasoline and stuff on that side of it because it does shoot sparks everywhere. Um, make sure that you don't have a car parked in the way because what it does is it sticks to your window on your car, your mirrors. This stuff comes out very hot and it impregnates itself right into your window, your glass. You can actually feel it and you can't get it off. It melts into the glass. So make sure that you're not in, if you're in your shop, that your cars are out of the way, okay? Flammable's out of the way. That is the, the negative of this saw, is it throws crap everywhere, it um, sparks in your eyes, um, pitch your windows out, catches stuff on fire, so just, that's one of the things that I don't like about the saw. But what I do like about the saw is the diversity of it and what you can get away with, okay? All right, so one of the things that um, I like about this saw is you do have an angle degree on this thing that you can, you can uh, knock this nut loose right here, or this little bolt, and you can turn this to 30, 40, 20 degrees, 15 degrees, whatever you want, and get it where you want it, okay? What sucks about that is it's a little bit of work. You gotta go get a wrench, you gotta break it loose. There's usually one that comes in the, in the box with the saw, but within the first month, you lose it. So you have to go find that and get that so you can do this back and forth, okay? Um, but let me just cut a piece with this thing. You guys can see how violent one of these are um you know usually with this you don't have a table set up a lot of these guys will and i do it at home i actually have one of these at home that i built a table where this is flush so it'll actually run right on here and you can chop it okay but i like these because i can carry them around the shop and i can cut some pieces with it really quick okay so let's get started you want to get it going you want to make sure you got this thing full throttle before you come down Okay? Make sure you got safety glasses on, because this thing throws sparks everywhere, okay? Okay, the reason why I don't have the guard on it that I like is you always have this burr on the end. I don't know if you can see that. See that burr? That's the thing about these abrasive saws is they always leave a little burr on the end right there. Okay, because it, it actually kind of melts through at the very end there because it's so hot. I like this saw. I can clean that up really quick and be ready to weld it in no time, you know what I mean? That's not recommended for this saw. But I do it because it's kind of, I've learned to use this saw for a lot of different things, you know what I mean? Like if you got a piece of soapstone and it's dull, nice and sharp. You make your line wherever you're doing, okay? So there's just, these are great for a lot of things, you know what I mean? Uh, when I'm doing exhaust, like on a vehicle, I like to have a saw like this because I can manipulate it. 
I can turn it. I don't really use, like there's a point where I won't even use this stop for anything. Like I'm gonna, I'm like in a hurry and I'm gonna guess, okay, this is about where I'm gonna So the blade that's on this side, I really shouldn't be using it right now because it's kind of a piece of shit. You can see how wobbly it is. They make a better saw blade than that. So make sure you get a good quality Norton, somebody that's got a good brand name saw blade. This is probably the, the piece of crap that came with it. You know what I mean? And um, the problem with piece of crap blades like this is they come apart and they go in your eyes and they throw off tons of shit in the air. So you might want to look into that like even though it, it probably came with it, but it's it's not a real great quality one. They, they're cheap, the ones that come with them. Um, the saw itself is a good saw, but get a good blade. But anyway, like I said, you can manipulate this thing, like round tube, exhaust, stuff like that. You can just lay it in there and cut it. If you got a good blade, this one's kind of a piece of shit, but usually you can get in here and you can cut really nice little pieces. Go fit it. If it don't work, you can come back and cut it again and cut it again. And you can carry this right over to wherever you're working. So if you're working on exhaust on a car, I'm just using this for example, because I do it all the time. You have it on a table like this, and you fit it here into the car, and it just don't quite fit. You can come over here and you cut it out a little bit more, set it up in there until you get it where you want it. Um, you know, doing, I did tons of wrought iron back in the 90s. I, I did tons of wrought iron fences. And I cut literally miles and miles of wrought iron on one of these saws right here, okay? If you're in there cutting, put a mask on, try to protect yourself from the uh, asbestos and all the crap that's inside this blade right here, okay? And that's why I'm saying the shitty blades throw off more crap than the good ones. So if you get a good quality one, they got more fiber in it, they're stronger, and um, they're just a better blade altogether. Um, so let's go over to the wet saw. I'll show you the difference between a wet saw and this abrasive saw. Okay, so let's talk about the pros and cons of a wet saw. Um, really, I don't have anything bad to say about a wet saw. These are great. These are uh, a lot more money than the abrasive saw. The blades are a lot more money, but if you take care of them, you can get you can get tons of mileage out of this blade. Okay, um, the abrasive blade is going to wear out. It's going to get smaller as it uh, goes away, and then you got to change the blade. Um, you know, the thing about this one here is your cuts are going to be way more accurate okay it's a, got a very good vice on it um it's a heavy machine it's set up and made to actually really take some abuse you can cut up to probably three and a half inch material with this sometimes four depending on the blade that's in it um the great thing about these is you can take the blades down and have them resharpened um there is a uh you got to mix some oil and water in it and the oil that you use basically is a cutting oil Okay, you, you don't want to just run any regular oil in it. This is, uh, this stuff, I'm going to actually put some in it because it's getting low anyway. And on this one here, you can just dump it in here and it goes into the drain. There's a, there's a drain down in there that it goes down into underneath here. Where your little sump pump is, you can see right here that this is the catch for all of your metal shavings. As you cut it, it falls down in here, it'll wash down in there and then it falls in there. You got to change that out once in a while, which I probably should do. There's a pump in there that'll pump the fluid back up into the, onto the blade. This is your regulator right here, so you can regulate how much water and oil you want coming out. Sometimes it gets crazy and it just shoots it everywhere and it falls and goes everywhere. So, um, but let's turn it on so you guys can see how it goes. You can see how the oil and the water's gonna come out. And I just put that oil in there, so it's probably gonna turn a little bit milkier here in just a minute and really show the oil that's in it. Um, that's the main thing is keep a lot of fluid in it, take care of your blade, if you take care of the blade, it'll last for, for a long time. Um, 
The great thing about this machine is it's a uh, it's really nice for cutting 45s. Um, any kind of degree angles in this thing, it's, it's beautiful. Um, the great thing about it here is you can actually move this vise around. And like right now I got it set up basically for straight. Now if I'm gonna cut a 45, I might drag this vise this, this way because I don't want it to hit it or I'll, I'll go this way. Depending on which side your material is the most of, you can slide this to it. And we'll show you here in a minute how that works. But right now, let's just make a straight cut. Let's vise this down. You can see this little cutaway right here. That's where the blade's gonna come down through. But we'll wheel this in really quick. You know, this machine's been through a lot. It's, it's an old machine. It's a quality machine. Um, and that's kind of what you want. I mean, if you guys are gonna get into the business and you want like some, some good quality tools, get a good machine. This machine, I think the worm gear went out of it one time, but it's probably got, I mean, I got it used. So, you know, it's probably got millions of hours of cutting on it. It takes abuse. Now, the one thing that you wanna do when you turn this machine on is make sure you turn it on, let the machine get to full speed before you come down. And when you come down, you don't wanna come down hard. If you come down hard, you're gonna break the blade, okay? It's gonna take a tooth off. You wanna come down slow and just work your way into it. This machine, with a good blade on it, will just cut itself, okay? This blade's been on there for a while, so it's had a little bit of abuse to it. But anyway, you can see right here, it leaves a less of a burr. It's a more accurate cut than the abrasive one. The abrasive one is is really pretty, pretty gnarly. This one here is nice. And then all you have to do is go over to the sander and touch that up a little bit and clean your burr off right there, because that right there will screw up your weld. Anytime you're laying out a piece of material, you can see that big gap right there. That could really screw you up when you're getting ready to weld. So you wanna make sure you clean that off and get it where it's flat and stood up on the edge. You can kind of see how it's, you wanna clean that burr off, okay? All right, let's show you guys how to, this one here, how nice it is to 45 with. Um, there's a few little things that you gotta do. I'm gonna break this loose right here. See, this one here basically locks it in so it doesn't move. And then you have a button right here that you pull. i move this out of the way. This thing here, you could actually move it over because we're gonna need to anyway. If you look on here, you can see that we're zeroed out right here. See that? Zeroed out. So you could turn this to 15 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, okay? So what we wanna do is we'll just roll it over to 45 degrees so you can see the max on it. So we're gonna turn this thing, let's get this out of the way. Okay, here's our mark right here. We're gonna turn this machine all the way to 45 degrees. And then it locks right there. There's a pin that'll lock it right there. Okay. Then what you got, that's what's so nice about this machine is you can kind of set it up pretty quickly. Um, we're gonna, gonna slide this to this way because the most of our material is gonna be on this side, okay? So we wanna clamp this side of the material. That's the long piece over there. Okay, we'll shut it down, we'll lock this. So we're good. Here's the thing, you gotta keep keep aware on this machine that when you, when you clamp it down, you don't want your clamp here because you're gonna cut this in half, okay? And this is hardened, and as soon as it hits that blade, it's gonna break it. So you wanna make sure that you're over here, you clamp it down, try to get it as close to the material as you can so it doesn't vibrate. Okay, and then you clamp your piece in there. And then let's cut us a 45 real quick. There you go. Now that's a nice, clean, very accurate. If I was gonna have to do a bunch of welding and a bunch of different things um, on very, a lot of accuracy, this is the machine that I would use before I would use the other one, okay? Because abrasive saw moves. When it's cutting it, it moves a little bit, okay? This one here, it's more accurate. That's, that steel blade is not gonna move. This vise is not gonna move. Once it goes in there, it's gonna lock itself down and it's gonna be exact. So, I mean, if, if I were gonna do a lot of production work, for sure, this is the machine to have. 
Um, you know, there's the, I guess the only thing that I could think that is not really handy about the machine is it's so heavy you can't drag it around the shop over there. I mean, you could put wheels on it, but this machine's set up here on rollers so you can actually do production work in here. I've got a steel rack right here behind me. I just whip down a piece of steel, I run it in here, I chop it, and I go. Um, but I mean, this, this one I'll use 10 times over the abrasive saw because it's more accurate, it's easier to use. Um, you know, if I'm gonna do an exhaust system or if I'm cleaning up some tubing, I'll use that other one. But nine times out of 10, this is the machine to use. So, you know, if you guys are out there getting ready to start a shop and you want a saw that's gonna last, go get a good name brand saw that's gonna last get a good quality blade, take care of it. If you got 10 guys in your shop that are running this saw, don't get one of these because they will break it every time because they don't know how to use them. And that, that blade is delicate, but it'll cut a thousand times more than that other one. You gotta be careful with them. You can't put them in a bind. You can't break, you can't pull them down really hard. You gotta let the saw do the work because one of those saws right, one of these blades right here about 250 bucks but it could last you a year, you know what I mean? Six months, and it cuts like that every time. It's very clean and accurate, and that's what I like about the wet saw over that. It's a lot quieter, it doesn't throw sparks. Um, it's, just, it's just all around a really a better saw. Um, one of these days, I'll break out a band saw. I've got a, a big band saw, and I'll show you the diversity with a band saw and what you can do in production with that. But for now, I just kind of want to show you guys the difference between an abrasive saw and a wet saw, the pros and cons. And you know, really, if it was up to me, I would have one of these. But if you got a shop at home and you're just getting started, go get an abrasive saw. There ain't nothing wrong with it. You can, you can do a ton of work with one of those. I, I started with that and grinder and a welder. Seriously, I built tons of stuff with just an abrasive saw and, um, and a cutoff wheel and a sander on a grinder. So, you know, um, but as you get going and things escalate in your business, if that's what you're doing, go get you a good quality saw, something that you can do production. You could cut a thousand of these today with this right now and not even bat an eye, but if you cut a thousand of them with that chop saw, there's a good chance you could burn the motor up in it because this is a 120 wall and it takes a lot to cut through it for that little saw and you'll burn up consumables like crazy and probably electricity. So <laughs> this is a 220, it's a nice machine. It doesn't take a lot of power, it runs really good. So. Anyway, guys, I hope you like this video. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Hey guys, so look, Welder 101 is basically a course to get you started. You don't need to have a welder. You don't need to know nothing about a welder. But if you're interested in welding and you wanna know how it works, uh, some of the terminology and motivation from me on how to get started and actually go out there and do something for yourself. Look, we don't have enough guys out there or women in the world that wanna weld anymore. So what I'm trying to do is inspire everybody to get out there Get off your butt, do a job that makes you feel like a man, it makes you proud. If you're a woman and you're doing it, you're making the guys look bad. So listen, just get out there and do it and be a badass.